If you're one of the millions of adults that suffers from chronic acid reflux, you may be at risk for developing a precancerous condition known as Barrett's esophagus. Our, we have a doctor here, your gastroenterologist at UT Austin. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, we just want to start by telling people what gastro, you know, issue this is, what, what Barrett's esophagus is. Barrett's esophagus is a condition where the cells lining the esophagus are transformed to these intestinal type of cells, mm -hmm. which are not normal and increase the risk of acid reflux and increase the risk of cancer and bad mm -hmm. esophagus. So um, population studies from the 1970s to date have shown that there has been an increase in esophageal cancer. Mm -hmm. For this reason, it's really important that we identify bad esophagus, which mm -hmm. is a precancerous condition. Mm -hmm. and once we diagnose, we can put these patients under surveillance so we can actually prevent progression to esophageal cancer. Yeah, and I feel like this is something that a lot of people, I, I was telling you before uh, this, this interview began that I actually have stomach issues and this is something my doctors look out for, but uh, you know, until I went through that, I had never heard of Barrett's esophagus, but this is a, a serious condition that people may not know about that they should. So what are the symptoms that people should look out for? Unfortunately, bad esophagus does not produce any symptoms that you wow. can feel. Okay. And it can only be diagnosed with an upper endoscopy and biopsy. Mm -hmm. But even though we don't know everything that increases the risk of bad esophagus, mm -hmm. we do know that there are certain risk factors mm -hmm. that puts a person at risk. Okay. So um, men are more likely than women, mm -hmm. Caucasian men particularly. Mm -hmm. Obesity increases the risk, mm -hmm. smoking, mm -hmm. family history of esophageal cancer mm -hmm. or bad esophagus increases the risk as well. But the most important and possibly modifiable risk factor is acid reflux. About 10 to 15 percent of patients with acid reflux can develop bad esophagus. Mm -hmm. So identifying these patients is most important. Mm -hmm. And at UT Health Austin, we not only have the ability to do endoscopy and take biopsies, we also have advanced biopsy techniques that can help detect bad esophagus more efficiently. Great. And what are those? What should people do if they think they might have some of those risk factors? So yeah, like I said, identifying the risk factors mm -hmm. that I alluded to earlier. Also identifying, you know, acid reflux, heartburn, mm -hmm. which is the most important symptom mm -hmm. of acid reflux, is important. And if you've had heartburn for more than five years, or if you're on medication, you know, for long term, or if you have acid reflux that is not well controlled, mm -hmm. these are all reasons, you know, you need to seek a gastroenterologist's help in diagnosing these conditions and uh, finding out if you have bad esophagus or not. So once you have these risk factors, the gastroenterologist will do an endoscopy, mm -hmm. take some biopsies from the esophagus, and the pathologist will look at those They're and awesome. see if you have bad yeah. or not. Um, you once you have that, then you can be on a surveillance program. Mm -hmm. And if we do find early signs of cancer at UT Health Austin, we also have the ability to ablate the tissue or remove the tissue that is potentially at risk for cancer as well. That's great. So this again something that people should be aware of and can take care of if they're yeah. staying up to date and, and making sure that they uh, check in with their doctor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate